Hello, and welcome to Crossover Sports. I'm Sam Egan, alongside Jacob Bryan, and we have a great show for you today. On today's show, we will be discussing RB sports being football, basketball, wrestling, as well as cross country. Then, we will be doing an interview with star guard of the basketball team, Arias Aliosis. Followed by that, we will have an interview with MLB first round pick, Owen Murphy. Then finally, we will be giving our hot takes for the class of 2024 and who we think will be a standout. But first, let's get into the biggest event in RB Sports history, our first team state championship being the cross country team. So Jake, let's discuss that amazing achievement. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, first of all, congratulations to all of them. It was, it was a crazy, crazy first sport and then state, uh, state champion is crazy, but first of all, a lot of juniors and sophomores on that cross country team, and uh, only one one senior being Zach Gaynor, RBTV's very own. Yeah, and uh, he he got like the third best of the team overall. But let's just talk about Cooper Mars first. I mean, fifth in state? Are you kidding me? I mean, he was on the state squad last year, and he yeah. finished twentieth in state as a sophomore. So you know he had big goals coming into yeah. this year, and he wanted to win a state championship, and he was working all summer playing two separate sports and swimming and baseball yeah. so you would think that distracts him he's out up in the morning going for runs oh, all the working time. hard uh, he wanted that as much as anybody and for he sure. worked so hard to get to fifth and that led his team to win the state championship but obviously it's not one person that wins the whole team's yeah. championship going on to not your brother jack <laughs> o'brien no relation no, no relation. relation but he had a tremendous performance mm -hmm. as well him and cooper were both all state yeah. and it was just a tremendous, tremendous moment for RB, and they were treated to a hero's welcome with a parade coming back home, an yeah. assembly, and it was just such a warm welcome yeah. for the RB well community. Well deserved, well deserved for that great team. I mean, yeah, I mean, cut head coach by uh, Jack Brady, his second year, and he's taken him to the state both years. Yeah. What does that say about a coach like that? I mean, dominance, uh, and obviously the players, the runners mm -hmm. love him, and I think it showed obviously with, with these back-to-back -back mm -hmm. state appearances in high high ranks and who knows what they can do next yeah. year as well so and uh, this year is really pushing his guys to work hard mm -hmm. after that state appearance last oh, yeah. year and they weren't content with how they did last year mm -hmm. they finishing third in state and he pushed those guys even harder like you said they're a very young squad so you expect to see them back yeah. next year I mean the loss of Zach Gainer will be tough but you still have Cooper and Jack O'Brien and who are who tremendous are just runners. keep improving and who knows how, maybe, maybe Cooper Mars could even get first in state next year. That, we'll, we'll I don't see that being out of the realm of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Now moving on, homecoming uh, for the football game. Yeah. That was a tremendous oh atmosphere, gosh, construction yeah. theme, and it was it was a packed student section, mm -hmm. and it was a tremendous game. Yeah, it was a great game. Uh, every, everyone came in thinking like, oh, it's gonna be a close game. It's gonna be maybe like a Yeah, these Christian. teams, I mean, these teams have played a lot in the mm -hmm. past being conference rivals, yeah. and Aurora Christian has always given them a tremendous football game and just really given them a run for their money each time they've played. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know Aurora Christian's big, like big passing team, and Arby's weakness was the secondary. So uh, that, that was my first concern of that game. Mm -hmm. But Arby showed that they, I think they were like perfectly coached for that game, as well as the like, great game plan because they they dominated. Yeah, Styler gave him a great game plan to, you know, go out there and stop the pass. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, sometimes when you go into a game like that, you, you cower against mm -hmm. going against exactly. one of your weaknesses. But they didn't do that. And another big thing going into that game was the loss of Ryan Novak. Yeah. He was still out dealing with that ankle injury. Jack Rivetti just coming back after mm -hmm. those, injuring his Those are your arm. two leading tacklers on the defensive side being your linebackers. And Ryan, too, being the starting running mm -hmm. back. Uh, you miss those guys a lot, but it showed that the team had his back, and it's a—it's obviously a family there, mm -hmm. and they—they they showed how how well prepared they were for that game. Before we get into the offense, I want to just talk about Drew Switek's performance oh in that game. Oh my gosh, yeah, he had a, a crazy interception, a one or I'm I'm pretty sure he had an interception in that game, but he was he was tag he was all over the field, honestly. He was all over the field, had that interception, and I mean he was really just kind of being that spark plug, that yeah. leader on the sideline. And the senior, I mean, he's he's been there before in those type of games. Uh, he, he played a lot last year as a junior, but I think that that was one of his best games he played all year. I, I would agree with that. Now going on to the offense, uh, Diego Gutierrez, I mean, they didn't really let, they started letting him pass a little more yeah. than he was the first few weeks. And that running game, like, you're giving oh, touches I'm, to Luke Kumskis, yeah. you're giving touches to Muhammad Salem, and David Valencia really had a great breakout game, game yeah, for that sure. game, and he's starting to prove his reins and see what he can do next year as a starting running back, mm -hmm. but more importantly, what he can prove this year as being the two-back and 
making the most of his reps. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I like the definition of it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And because Vojek just kept pounding the run game and. Uh, Diego didn't really have to do much passing that game because they couldn't. The only time they were was on that last drive yeah. where he found Adam Yurisegi, who made a tremendous oh gosh, catch. Defender was, was there for the play, and mm -hmm. Yurisegi made up for the just right place, right time. Yeah, tip drill and caught it with one hand. It was one of the coolest catches I've seen at RB game, for sure. Now, moving on, let, let's talk about our wrestling program. Who, mm -hmm. They just won conference, led three guys, won their individual weight classes, that being seniors. Billy Martin and Joe Madonna, as mm -hmm. well as sophomore Edgar Muscara. Before we get into the sophomore Muscara, let's talk about those two seniors, Martin and Madonna. I mean, they're just athletes, uh, to be honest. Like, uh, wrestling, wrestling is one of the toughest sports, and mentally and physically draining. And those guys just, I mean, got better each year, and then showed that they're one of the best. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple other guys that qualified for sections, like Devonte Givens, mm -hmm. and we'll see what he can do because he's a big guy, and yeah. he was he was coming very close to winning that. That conference. Yeah, some some football players, obviously big wrestlers, but um, yeah, Devontae, he's he's great. He's he's his tenacity is crazy. He's he wants to win, and he's one of the most competitive people I know for sure. Oh, 100. He's got that competitive fire where he's mm -hmm. I am going to beat you. Yeah. And like him and Madonna, I could see being 31 wrestlers. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, but Madonna, I mean, he's 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 the leader of that team. He's mm -hmm. been by far their best wrestler. Oh yeah. And I'm just curious to see where he does and if he takes wrestling at the next level because he's he's been dominating mm -hmm. at the Illinois level. He definitely has that talent to play maybe D2, maybe even D1, who knows, mm -hmm. because he's just continuing to win. I mean, that's what wrestling is, is just is uh, consistency and he showed that. And Coach Kirby's done a tremendous job with that program. Oh. They went to state last year. What, the last two years there's been mm -hmm. a state tournament. Kirby's brought them there. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what they do. And Moskira, I just can't talk about him enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they had that one meet against Downers Grove North, who is ranked top three in state. Mm -hmm. They have a wrestler going to Northwestern, that just a very talented squad. D1 loaded, and the yeah. only guy on the RB roster to get a win was Edgar Moskira. Yeah. So I'm I'm scared to see what he can do <laughs> by the time senior year comes around because he is going to be yeah, exactly. a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And finally, let's talk about our basketball squad. Um, they've just been dominating the MSC all year, undefeated in conference. Oh, yeah. uh, but one game I want to go into is that game against St. Francis where conference rivalry, a lot of banter back and forth, even some directed at me, <laughs> nonetheless. But I mean, that was such an electric game and it was a scary start for the Bulldogs yeah. who went down 18-6. Yeah, it was, it was scary for sure. I, Ryan Gruber had to take a timeout early and surprised to see that Francis was making big time shots. I mean, uh, Hearn hit a couple threes from the corner and, uh, it felt like he just wasn't like oh, no one wasn't was missing him effort. and Stan were exactly. just not missing. Stan, Stan was just those mid ranges were crazy, and um, it I think it was it just caught RB like off guard and they were just surprised. Yeah, because St. Francis, uh, not to interrupt you, but they're more of a defensive yeah. team. Like no, they they were exactly. allowing only like forty five points a game, mm -hmm. but like they weren't scoring that many either. Yeah, and um, RB I just wasn't making shots, but then. I think that timeout helped them out, and then they started really just changed things up. Mm -hmm. They started getting to like their identity as a team, which was get the ball to Stefan Chisik. No, and you and you talked to Coach Ryan Gruber at halftime, mm -hmm. and he pretty much said just we have to like we just started playing defense. Yeah, like, exactly. They just weren't exactly. given a hundred ten percent effort. They mm -hmm. just thought they could kind of like coast through that game. And lolly and gag, yeah. It bit them in that first quarter, mm -hmm. but that second quarter was just dominant, led the way by Ari Saliosis, who had oh my gosh. three three pointers, yeah, including one at the buzzer. The buzzer, I mean. It, He's he's so good off the dribble now. It's crazy how much he's improved. And um, that that three before the buzzer, and he was I mean dribbling up. Everyone want like he everyone knew, knew that he was gonna yeah, take the shot. Knew. Got the and screen from Turner. He, and hand in his face still drains it. And that I think was a big momentum booster for that Riverside Brookfield yeah, team. Yeah, that that put the Bulldogs up ten. Yeah. I think the the biggest play that like flipped the script was that three from Landon Rivers. Oh my gosh! He's yeah. someone you don't expect to come off mm -hmm. the bench and shoot threes. He's more of a drive. He's your, de he's your defense yeah. guy. Yeah. He's gonna get you stops on defense. Maybe get you a couple steals. Mm -hmm. And he comes up and hits a three, and it kind of just deflates the life out of oh, St. Francis. Agreed, hundred percent, hundred percent. And then I mean, I'm gonna go just scoring wise. Three three RB starters in double digits being I mean Will Gonzalez Jr. and then Arias Sr. and then. Stefan, who's a junior as well. And all three guys have been averaging double figures oh, yeah. all, all year. It's their Stephon big Sissick three. Stefan averaging a double double. Yeah, it's their big three. And uh, I think when they got him, when they got Steph the ball, it was just 
who was unstoppable because no, no one was big enough to guard him. No one, no, no one was. They didn't. They didn't have T.J. McMillan anymore. Mm -hmm. He graduated early, so he couldn't play. And that that would have been a center that could have stopped them. That's maybe. A, that's maybe a, that's a six 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 seven offensive line. I feel Who's like a he big dude. Yeah. Playing at Illinois, so I feel mm -hmm. like he definitely could have done some damage Possibly. to Sissick and limited his production. But I guess we'll never. But know. Ali Aliosis wasn't missing his shots. Oh my either. gosh! Yeah, he was. I'm his three. I mean, he he's been inconsistent in some games, but most of the time he's been lights out beyond the arc and he showed this game with a lot of a lot of contested threes and you can't leave him open and it was it shown when when he is on he is on yeah but that is going to do it for this segment of crossover sports stay tuned because we're going to talk to arius aliosis about that saint francis game right after this <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Crossover Sports. We have another segment, Player in Perspective. I'm here with star guard uh, Arius Aliosis, and uh, we're going to watch some clips, and I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions about these games. So let's get right into it. Well, you guys were down early, which I was surprised to see, but then you came back with hitting um, some big threes to get you guys back in the game. So um, how do you think, like, when, when with your leadership as a senior, like, do you, like, um, just, like, when, how, how, how were you talking to your like, teammates when you guys were down early? Uh, it has to be a balance of both being like positive and getting on people is like getting on people because yeah. you can't you can't be uh, harsh and always yeah, yelling at them obviously. and uh, putting them down. But I can't always be positive, being saying let's let's go, let's get this, mm -hmm. uh, even if we're down big. So you gotta be positive. You gotta like I like to say it's like the sandwich. So you mm -hmm. come out with the good first. You like okay. are we good? But then you gotta be hard. You gotta be like, hey man, you gotta pick it up on defense, mm -hmm. and then you finish off. But let's keep playing hard. Yeah. So. Uh, and then, so yeah, those those were big threes, you guys, to get you back in the game. And um, the next clip is uh, an off the dribble three here, uh, before the buzzer. Like, are you? I I feel like you've improved your game a lot off the dribble because a lot last year was catch and shoot. But so like, how much have you worked on creating your own shot? Uh, I've definitely worked on a lot, especially after practices most recently, but during the offseason, the summer mm -hmm. and spring and fall, uh, I've definitely worked on it a lot because I know when they when they come, like, if they try to run me off the line, I got to know how to dribble and yeah. get my own shot. Yeah, that because that, I remember last year was a lot of off ball, like screens and you'd come around, but this year is a lot of off the dribble, so a lot of improvement there. And then uh, this is in the next half. This is a great pass to finding Steph. Um, so that was a one-handed no-look pass, and um, how much have you improved as a ball handler since getting a new role this year for for being a senior? Uh, I think my ball handler definitely came up because my role has improved. Yeah. So obviously, if I want to elevate my role, I have to elevate mm -hmm. my game. So I've elevated, try to find so like they can't rip me or they can't pressure me. Mm -hmm. I gotta make sure I handle it, no turnovers, and just gotta find my teammates. Okay, yeah, because I mean I've seen you taking up the ball a lot this year as well as Will, but. You, you've improved passing as well as, as we saw there. And then the next clip is a defensive highlight, which I'm surprised to see, no offense, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was just a little pick play, like you just picked them off. Have you like, um, do you usually get like the tougher assignments on defense or you just hand them off to other guys? Uh, yeah, I, I normally just pass off the harder assignments because I don't want to lock up the best player. Mm -hmm. Cause then the game would get boring. Nah, I was playing. But uh, <laughs> uh, normally I get like usually the bigger, slower guy. Cause mm -hmm. uh, I mean we have some size, but it's just me, Will, Steph that are more over about like above six foot. Yeah. So normally I get the bigger guy, and I'll have somebody else like uh, like take the faster, mm -hmm. uh, better guys. But usually I'm big help, so I'm always got the, my teammates best. Yeah, and then also like I I feel like you guys play a lot of man. Like I haven't seen a lot of RB zone. Have, have you? Like ever thought you guys like could have played zone against a team or or usually man works. Uh yeah we play a lot of man but I think uh, at times we should have definitely ran a couple of zone. Mm -hmm. uh, in one game in particular I think against probably Curie mm -hmm. if we forced them to shoot I think we would have had a better chance of winning. Yeah, so. and that that was still um, a close game most of the time but yeah that was that was early in the season too so I I'm just gonna ask do you guys think you guys or do you, do you think you guys can beat Curry, um, if you played him later in the year? Uh, I definitely believe so, especially if we make the right adjustments. So mm -hmm. I think we could definitely beat him. And yeah, especially how we're clicking recently uh, as of now. So we've been clicking real well. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we keep going, continuing that train. And then the last clip, uh, it's, it's not here, but um, 
it was a moving three, and you like practice those types of shots in practice or in warm ups, I should say, a lot of the time, like moving and getting a hand in your face. Uh, yeah, I make sure uh, I just get war like just get practice with it because mm -hmm. I know I'm definitely gonna see or I'm gonna have to take some shots like that in game. Yeah. So if I if I have to shoot like that, I have to make sure I practice and mm -hmm. knock them down. So that, yeah, and um, congrats on a great year so far. And that's gonna do it for this segment of um, player in perspective. Artist, thank you again for for coming on the show and um, we're gonna send a commercial break. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to Crossover Sports. Joining us today is a very special guest, first round pick and RB alum, Owen Murphy. Owen, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, absolutely, I love to be here. I know the last few months have been an absolute whirlwind for you, just so much going on. But before we get into that, I wanna get into like just starting off with your baseball career, because I know Rake City was an integral part of your baseball career. So when was it something you really knew that it was something that you could like pursue as a professional career? Um, I always uh, had a dream to be able to do all this and everything. And uh, I mean, once I joined Rake City, that was uh, the, the point of all of that was I wanted to play in college, uh, wanted to play professionally after that. And uh, I mean, my coaches there, Ryan Crowley, Pete Flores, Jerry Kutnick, Dan Brewer were the best. And uh, I thank them for everything, giving me all the info uh, throughout my years there was just amazing and uh, giving me opportunities to be able to uh, play at the uh, top of the game, play the best uh, play the best guys there. So Before we get into you getting drafted, I want to talk about your senior year at RB, which was just phenomenal, otherworldly, a .12 ERA going 9-0, and throwing four no-hitters in two perfect games. Just purely absurd, and I was grateful enough to have a front row seat to that in the dugout. So. Tell me a little bit about your senior season. What went well, pitch repertoire, and all of that? Well, I mean, first of all, the team that we had, the guys that we had was the reason that I had the season like that. Uh, just amazing guys, top to bottom, guys on the bench, guys playing the field, guys playing short right behind me, it didn't matter. It was just amazing guys, top to bottom. Uh, shout out to Brian Toomey, to my catcher. He was amazing. He did exactly what I wanted as a backstop. Just absolutely great catcher. Uh, we had amazing guys on the team that helped me do what I wanted to do, and it was just fun. It was just me going out there and doing my thing and having fun and uh, wanting to win, and I know that everyone else on the team wanted to win, so that pursuit is is what uh, brought me those numbers. I never really thought about it. It was just all all about leading that team to success and to wins and, and, and doing our thing, you know. And pitching-wise, that wasn't your only aspect. You were a two-way player, not just a two-way player. You were the best two-way player in the country, winning the perfect game, two-way national player of the year, Gatorade, Illinois player of the year. What do those awards mean to you? Uh, they mean a lot. Uh, I mean, it's kind of surreal winning some of those, uh, especially the national players and the uh, uh, state players uh, and all that. It's just, uh, it's really cool to be a part of all of that and, and everything, kind of looking up to it while growing up and seeing all these other guys win it that I looked up to. So to be a part of that family and a part of that uh, group was uh, is really special. But I mean, again, I couldn't have done it without the team that we that we had uh, on that uh, on that field at any given time. It was just the best group of guys, the best group of 20 guys that we could have put out there. Now going back a little bit, right before your senior year, you were selected to Team USA. How awesome of an achievement that was! How much did that mean to you to represent your country? And what was that experience like? Uh, I was. It's hard to explain uh, the feelings that I had throughout each national anthem that we did uh, when we played our uh, when we played our series against Canada. It was just unreal to be able to play uh, on that kind of international st scale. Even though we uh, the WBC for us was um, was canceled, uh, which stunk because of COVID and everything. But at the same time, I uh, got to wear that jersey. And I wore it proud. It was the best seven days to two weeks of my life. Just so fun. And I couldn't have asked for a better experience from the coaches and, and the players and everyone. You had a really successful draft combine in San Diego. You were projected top 40-ish and you flew up the draft ranks and were selected 20th overall. How shocked were you by that fly up? And what was that call like when you did get called by the Braves? Oh, it was, it was crazy. I wasn't expecting to be taken that high. Uh, just kind of uh, stuff flying all over the place. Draft day the day before that was kind of crazy. Uh, talking to my agent, talking to uh, different coaches, different people in the biz, just trying to figure that all out. It was just, uh, it was a lot. And then uh, when the day came, I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna enjoy the day. I got all my teammates here. I got my family here at our little draft party thing. I just wanna, 
I just want to enjoy the day with them and who cares what happens just just enjoy the ride and if you don't get taken today whatever it doesn't matter the first two rounds were that day so I was like hopefully I'm in those but we'll see and then uh, when uh, the Braves came calling in the first round I was utterly shocked it was a uh, it was kind of like a surreal hour of my life where it was just like I I had no clue what was going on but I was just so ecstatic and happy at the same time yeah be, I was there for that thank you so much for letting me be there. It was really for me such a surreal moment seeing one of my teammates get drafted in the MLB because that's really a once in a lifetime experience. So why was it so important to have that experience at home compared to being at the draft? Uh, yeah, I got invited out and uh, the, uh, automatically I was like, no, I want to share this moment with all my teammates and all the people back at home who have been supporting me throughout my career. Uh, it's just an um, amazing part of uh, of, of, of what I did. I couldn't have done anything without the people around me. So I wanted to give back to them and have them share that moment with me because that's how much it meant to me. And I, I could care about the glitz and the glamour. I want, I want my people to, uh, to be represented. Owen, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure having you on, just talking baseball and find out a little bit more about your experiences through the past few months. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for having me on. Uh, this will do it for this segment of Crossover Sports. Stay tuned because we will be doing our hot takes right after this. Hello, and welcome back to Crossover Sports. We begin our final segment doing our Class of 2024 standouts. So Jake, you want to get us started with what incoming senior you think will have the biggest impact in RV sports next year? Yeah, I, I got um, a basketball player being Will Gonzalez, who's a junior this year, and going into his final year at RB, four-year starter he would be, and um, and yeah, I think I think he takes a big scoring jump from this year to next year, uh, over 15 points per game, and then continuing with his assist numbers with over five a game, and might lead him even to a regional championship. Who knows? I like that take a lot, especially with him like now Elios is leading because mm -hmm. Gonzalez is the third leading scorer right now. Yeah, and I think once he leaves, that paves the way for him to like open up the floor more. Oh yeah, and he's gonna create have... his own shots, and you, you he started to become more comfortable with taking tough. Contested shots, yeah. both mid range and from beyond the arc. Mm -hmm. And like when he gets hot in games, he, he takes over. So oh, I really 100%. like that take. And I think next year he'll really take over that team next year. And I think a regional championship is the goal every year. I think yeah. it's going to happen again. Agreed. Now, for me, I'm going to go into my hot take. And I think Luke Kumskis is going to be an all conference player next year okay. for the Riverside Brickfield Bulldogs. Tight end slash running back this year. Made some big plays this year couple touchdowns, was involved heavily in both the passing and running oh, yeah. game. He's like their Swiss Army knife on offense. He could block, he can run the ball, he could catch anything. Yeah, he, he really does anything for that offense and mm -hmm. he can do it on the defensive end as well. He originally when he came up to varsity he was on he was on defense before he yeah. transitioned to the tight end. So I feel like he's just gonna have a huge impact on that Bulldogs team next year. He's gonna really be a leader. A lot of the guys will revolve around him mm -hmm. and Diego. And I think because of that, the Bulldogs, they'll finally get past the first round for the first time in six or a seven while, years. Yeah. And they will make it to the second round of the playoffs in the 6A class. That's a respectable hot take. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, that'll do it for our RB special across the sports. We thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.